Welcome to Staying Healthy Naturally, a show that focuses on healthy ways to help you achieve optimal wellness. I'm your host, Dr. Gary Krakoff. I'm a pharmacist and have my degree in naturopathic medicine and work down the street at Johnson Compounding and Wellness on Main Street in Waltham. And today I'm very happy to welcome our guest, Kara Ka- Carmen. She's a territorial manager for Sigvaris. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. And we're going to be talking about compression socks today. And the compression socks that are available today aren't what we think about that our grandmothers wore, which were almost like putting on tire tubes. Yes. You know, I have mine on right <laughs> now. I don't know if you can see it. And I don't have varicose veins, but I find I'm sitting a lot, either sitting or standing 10 hours a day. And I find at the end of the day, on when I wear the compression socks, my legs and feet aren't anywhere near as tired at the end of the day. Yeah. So if you could tell us a little bit about compression socks. Yeah, so compression socks are really anyone can wear them. They are beneficial for graduated compression. So what that basically means is they're going to be a little bit tighter at the ankle and then they're slowly going to loosen as they go up the leg. So that's basically what they're doing is making sure the blood isn't sitting and pooling and almost causing swelling in the bottom of your legs. So that's why your legs feel so much you know, healthier and lighter and almost feel better because at the end of the day, you're getting that pressure back up and your blood and your calf muscle is pumping that blood back up to your heart. Excellent. And um, I have a whole list of questions for you. So do you need to have leg problems or swollen legs or varicose veins or have had an embolism and discharge from the hospital to wear them? Or is this something that would be beneficial for probably most people? Most people, I would say, honestly. Those are probably the more medically complex patients that have the DVTs, that have those varicose veins or spider veins, so they medically need them but they have the fun colors now. They have the pinks yeah, and the I was noticing, socks. you know, <laughs> something like this. Yeah, exactly. And this is a regular compression sock. That's a regular Just compression stocking. Un- and it's a medical grade compression stocking. We basically identify them with the levels of compression. So for example, you prescribe a medication for blood pressure. You're getting a medical dose of your medicine. Mm-hmm. Compression stockings is medicine for your legs. So anyone can wear them at the 15 to 20 level, which okay. is the lightest compression we have. All right. And going before we get into all the different types of socks or hose that you have or that the company has, what about you hearing a lot about people having um, problems with flying, whether it be short distance or long distance? Do they need to go to a doctor to get a prescription for if they don't have any problems, they just want to put something on to help prevent that. Is that something they can go in and pick up without a prescription? Yep, so basically (laughs) you can get them at Johnson's Compounding and Wellness. You can just walk right in there and they're gonna take a measurement of your ankle and it's your shoe size. And you can basically take the compression stockings You're going on a trip, you want to feel lighter on your legs. I say um, you don't want travel fatigue for your legs. You don't want, you know, that um, jet lag lag for your legs. legs. (laughs) So you want to feel refreshed and get off the plane. You're in a confined space. You can just go there and get fitted and take them with you. And (laughs) along with that, you should make sure you're getting up and walking around and staying hydrated and all that. Yep. All right. I'm seeing... I'm going to jump ahead because I want you to tell us about the different types of stockings, but I'm seeing a lot of people, not just the professional athletes, but there are a lot of people, I know I do long distance bike riding, and a lot of people are wearing knee-high compression hose for exercising at the gym, you see it, Mm -hmm. there's sleeves. What's going on there? Yeah, so I think, you know, the professional athletes kind of were on the forefront of it to get the latest and greatest technology, but now it's available for everyone. Um, This is actually our high-tech compression stocking um, that is 20 to 30 compression, so it's actually our medium compression level. Um, They're just basically a calf garment, so they come right up anyone can wear these. Again, it's a medically measured product, but it can also go based on shoe size as well. Um, It just has that cushion sole, so that extra support, you know, if you're running on pavement or you're doing high 
high intensity bike riding and things like that, it's going to actually oh, help with the cushion, cushion sole. Um, and then it comes right up the leg and it kind of looks fashionable. You wouldn't know this is necessarily a medically grade compression stocking. Available so. just in red? Available in all types of colors. <laughs> okay, we have good. pink, we have black, we have limeade, we have so many different fun, funky colors. Um, but if you like your t traditional blacks and whites, we have that too. Okay. So, so for people like your, your demo on the leg, that an argyle sock and all that, what about for if a business person or somebody, a woman who's wearing a dress? Yeah. You know, that is nice, yeah. but what are, what are the socks, uh, the thickness, or does it look like an ace bandage? <laughs> yeah, so we have all types. So for example, I'm wearing our soft opaque right Let's now. Let's see. Um, that okay. has, you know, it's in the color mist, but this is more for a sheer product. So we have really, really sheer, which is almost, you can't even tell almost that like you're wearing stockings. anything. Almost like a stocking um, or, you know, pantyhose for women. Um, but we also have, you know, men's dress socks as well, which I always ask people, what do you do? You know, what do you like to do? Are you going to work every day? Are you active? Are you biking? Are you taking your dog for walks? Based on their lifestyle, we have different options for them. I think that's the nice thing about Sigvaris in general is we have something for every day of the week. We kind of segmented our different products based on essential, which is the medical, the beiges, the blacks, the medically complex patients. We have style, which is the funky argyles and stripes. Um, and then we have motion, which motion is for the high intensity you know, workouts or you just need a little extra support. Um, so we kind of segmented that way so people have options. That so. is great. And so it isn't just for the people coming out of the hospital. Correct. There's all different levels. Now, a question I get often is people will say, should I wear the stocking type or the open toe with the toes open? What's it's preference. Okay. It's truly so preference. So it gives the same compression. Yep. And it's not that for one condition it should be one way or just for general wearing. So Correct. they can wear it either way. Yep. Okay. There's now, no compression in the foot at all. It's only yep. the, the ankle, ankle and, and up. up. Yep. Okay. Great. Now I noticed um, back at the wellness center we have samples of the different materials. Some of them feel like sneaker socks. Some of them feel like stockings. Some of them are in between mm -hmm. and um, the different lengths you they come and tell me I don't know if <laughs> knee yeah. high thigh high and then pantyhose correct okay. so based on the person's shoe or you know style that they like if it's a woman they can you know wear shears which is the thinnest material still gives the same compression still com same compression so it doesn't have to be thick to compress properly. Correct. And they come in calf style, which is just right up to the knee. They come thigh for a thigh high. So if you need it to come up and above a certain area, sometimes if people have knee replacements, we recommend it comes up and over the knee. Um, and then pantyhose. So for women that maybe don't want a thigh high, they just feel more secure in a pantyhose, we have that option as well. Okay. So basically it's your compression level and then your preference on what you think you're actually going to wear more of. So. Okay. What about, because compression is great, what about if a woman's pregnant? Yeah, so we actually have maternity pantyhose so for pregnancy. So it just has a pant so the waist doesn't compress. Yep, so we actually have um, a product that has a larger panis. So what that basically means is the stretch panel on the belly part can expand or contract based on if they have pregnancy. So we actually have a little brochure for just people that are pregnant. So that would probably be very helpful because they have a lot of pressure on the veins, the major veins inside from the baby pushing, which then impedes the fluid coming up. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And the way the baby sits actually is on the femoral vein. So sometimes, you know, you don't really have any issues. Um, but a lot of the time when I do go to OBGYN offices, I kind of educate them to say, if you see a pregnant lady coming in, and they look like they have rocks in their shoes and they're uncomfortable, maybe they could benefit from compression. Right. You see a lot of the time, you know, with pregnancy, the swollen ankles, the bigger legs, some
sometimes one leg is bigger than the other, they could benefit from compression with maternity pantyhose, but they could also benefit too from just a, th a calf garment. So basically something that just comes right up to the knee and that would help take care of their swelling as well. Okay, we're starting to see a lot of people who are, starting, who are getting swelling or storing fluid, they put on Lasix or different diuretics and it isn't working, which usually means it's more lymphatic backup. So yes. can we go into that? Yeah. And a lot of people, um, they'll go to the doctor and they come to the store, to the wellness center, but they're getting there at four or five o'clock at the end of the day and their legs are huge. And I hear the surgical fitters telling them, we really need you to come back earlier in the day. Yes. Yes. So it's best to get measured for a compression garment, regardless if it's a compression stocking or a lymphedema garment. Um, it's, the, it's the best in the morning because that at that point is when you're the smallest. Throughout the day, you walk around, better, better measurement, more accurate measurement. So we want them to be a little bit tighter to help compress and ultimately shrink whatever part of the body you're trying to get a little bit more compression level. So for example, when you walk around throughout the day, your feet swell, you know, your shoes get a little tighter sometimes. So we recommend if you're gonna take a measurement, do it in the morning. Um, and then for the lymphedema garments, we have a whole line of garments for upper extremity, lower extremity. Um, you know, we have compressive shorts and things like that. Um, we have all sorts of garments for that as well. This is our lymphedema brochure. Um, it just kind of shows the benefits because the lymphatic system is different than just your normal swelling or your varicose veins or things like that. This is a different type of disease state that's incurable, but we can help with certain garments that can help shrink and um, not make it as painful for people. Very good. So now we talked a bunch about the person who's exercising, the person who's on their feet, the person who's sitting way too much. What about on the medical side? People getting, are in the hospital. What sort of um, conditions are people running into and then being discharged with that little slip of paper saying you need to get these compression hose? Yeah, so a lot of the time in hospitals, people will be in the hospital for a normal surgery and they might develop a DVT. Um, so which they'll is? be, which is um, deep vein thrombrosis, okay. which is um, basically a blood clot in the leg that could travel up to the lung and cause um, a pulmonary embolism. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a thing that can be prevented. Um, you know, not all the time, but it's a preventable situation that could happen in a hospital setting. So for example, when you're in the hospital and you're in the bed, you're basically in an anti-embolism stocking. And that is essentially a TED stocking. It's um, the white compression stocking. So that's a little bit different than a graduated compression stocking. So those, if I remember correctly, the TED stockings are great if you're lying in bed but they're not yes. meant if you're, in, if you're walking around. Yes, so that's a huge thing. We always have a conversation about the key differences between anti-embolism and graduated compression. So let's have that conversation. We will have that conversation. Anti-embolism stockings are basically tight, loose, tight, loose all throughout the leg. There's no rhyme or reason of being tight at the ankle like we spoke of before. So if you're walking around in your ambulatory, you need that compression tightus at the ankle and gradually get lighter as you go up the leg. So those are just the key differences of anti-embolism versus graduated compression. So it's important for people to know if you came home with a pair of TEDs on, that isn't what you should be wearing if you're supposed to be up and about. Correct. And I don't want to put you on the spot, but that could probably cause more harm than good. Yes, and it okay. could almost just really not do anything for the patient. Um, you know, that's the main issue with hot being discharged from the hospital. You were, you know, down and out. I say TEDs are for beds, and that that's sticks cute. with people. <laughs> <laughs> um, TEDs are for beds. Um, they're for people that are non-ambulatory. They can't get up. They can't do what they're supposed to do. But once you're discharged and you're walking around, you're a little bit more active, you're recuperating from whatever procedure that brought you in the hospital, that's at that point you should almost graduate to graduated compression. Okay. Now you mentioned 
different compre amounts of compression. I assume the real high compression is on prescription, that the doctor needs to say you need that. Yes. As the compression goes up, it must be much harder. I know on these, I'm not feeble, but <laughs> I find I have to, it's a little, just a little bit of work putting them on compared to a regular cotton sock. Yeah. It's no big deal. But what happens when you get into the higher compression, and a lot of times it's a more elderly person or a more mature person. Yes. And so you don't, we've had people come in and say, yeah, I grabbed it and I tried pulling it on and I tore the stocking. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to put them on? Are there any aids or things you should and shouldn't do? Yes, so we can go through the different compression levels. So, 10, so 15 to 20 is the lightest compression level. Anyone can get that. It's prophylactic, it's preventative, just a little light support. The 20 to 30 is the medium compression level, which is the most prescribed compression level, and anyone can really wear the 20 to 30 compression levels. I wear 20 to 30 every day. Um, it is a medically measured product, but it's gonna give you that a little bit extra support. The 30, 40s and above are the ones for the medically complex patients. So patients that really need that compression or that dose of compression for their legs. Um, we have different donning garments and donning aids to help with getting on the compression stocking. So for example, we have two types of gloves. We have our, you know, our normal rubber glove with grips on them, on the tips, and then we have another type of glove as well. These are just simple donning aids that can help ease the garment over the heel of the foot and up the leg. And so that's just, that'll help grab it instead of your fingers and nails going through it when you're pulling? Correct, okay. correct. So those are garments. We also have um, a garment called the Magnide, which is great for people that travel. It almost is made from parachute material that helps ease that garment so up and over the leg. It's slippery. It's so slippery, it yes. On. And it okay. just has to get past the heel. I also tell people too, is just a little tip, don't bunch it up like a normal sock. This is like a hundred rubber bands trying to pull this apart. Okay. I tell people to find the heel and just fold the stocking down and then open it. Oh, so you're only putting half as much? Half as much, because if you think of the compression, you're bunching that up, it's gonna be a little tighter and harder to get on, but I this is a simple- new today. A little simple technique I do every day. And then after you day. get it up, you just grab the top of it and Grab unwrap. the top and pull. Excellent, yep. and how about getting them off? And getting them off is the same thing. I just say roll it peel down, them down, peel them down. Don't be too, you know, too crazy aggressive. with them, aggressive with them. Um, they'll go where you want them to go. Um, these are machine washable. That was my next question, how do you take care of them? Yep, so they are machine washable. I say just put them on delicate and then hang dry them. But okay, once you the wear dryer. them, not I don't I don't put them in the dryer, well, that would you can. The elastic. Yep, you can put them in the dryer, but to make them last longer, ours are guaranteed to last six months. Um, I say just hang dry them, you know. Okay. But if you happen to throw it in the dryer by accident, we, you can do that too. So either okay. way, it's okay. Um, but they're guaranteed to last six months. So, you know, they'll get a little bit easier the more you wear them. Excellent. And we talked about the lymph products. That looks like a very interesting gadget you have there. Yes. Because if somebody's leg is real big, is they have a lot of swelling, then if the garment does the right job, it's going to go down a little, then do they have to buy another pair and then another pair as it goes down? Not someone who's measured in the morning, but someone who has the real big heavy legs. Yeah, so we recommend that people get measured every six months for compression garments. Okay. Um, sometimes people fluctuate in weight. Sometimes people get smaller in size. That's ultimately our goal. Um, our sizes do come in ranges. So okay. whatever size your leg is that day, you know, it is a range of sizing, but you'll know when it gets a little too small, you might have to go back and get remeasured. But that ultimately tells you the garment is doing the job it says it was going to do. Um, but typically we just recommend people to do every six months to get back and remeasured. Okay. This is the Comperflex garment. This is a little bit for more medically complex patients or patients with open wound or ulcers. The nice thing about this garment is people that can't get on the compression stockings 
and just prefer a little bit more of a durable product. They don't want to put their, you know, they don't want to pull too hard or they maybe ripped a few compression stockings. This might be a great option as well. It has that stretch panel that holds on the leg and you can basically don the garment with the straps and just pull them over. And, but how do you know how far to pull? So we have actually AccuTabs based on the size of the leg that will denote what compression they can tolerate. So you can pull to the line to be oh, 20, so that 30. Gets set and then you just pull it up to that spot. Yep. So then if somebody has a lot of lymphedema and as the fluid is being removed or squeezed out, they could even, with the same garment, make it a little snugger because it'll be getting looser as they're healing. Exactly, oh, so exactly. And these do come in the size ranges as well. Um, okay. We want you know, patients to stay in the same garment, but we also want to decrease them in size so they can pull the straps a little oh, yeah. bit tighter. Excellent. Yep. Now, are the, are the socks generally, um, I don't know, hot? Like, we do get that a lot. Um, you know, a, a big, a big thing for people. That's great in the people. winter when it gets freezing, but what about you know, in the spring or summer or if you're indoors all day? That's the nice thing. You have options now. That's the biggest takeaway, I would say. It's not, you know, the typical compression stocking or the grandma's hose back in the day. Okay. Um, we have garments that are sheer, they're breathable, um, and they can... I know if you have, they're not all nylon or spandex, there's cotton, there's cotton support. Yes, we do a really breathe. good job of manufacturing them. Um, we actually manufacture all of our garments in the USA. So in Peachtree City, Georgia, and Holland, Michigan, they are made from the Supima cottons. So if you have a skin sensitivity, you can pick a compression stocking based on the material. We have the, the nylons, we have the spandex, we have the cottons, but they're ultimately double covered yarns. So that's the other part of our products that really make us different from other you know, manufacturers of helping get that garment up and over their heel, like we spoke of before. Because they're double covered yarns, it kind of helps ease that slide a little bit more up. and slide it up the leg. Very good. So, where do I want to go from here? I have so many things going through my head. Um, what's, for someone, the everyday person, not the person who's being medically discharged, what would the procedure be, you know, when they come into the wellness center? Yeah. So, so they, you know, I'm looking for compression socks, you know, my legs are getting tired. What do I do? I always ask people, <coughs> the first question, are you familiar with compression? If they are, that's great. If not, I explain to them a little bit about that graduated compression. It's gonna be tightest at the ankle and gradually get a little bit looser up the leg. The next question I always ask people is, are those the shoes you like to wear? What do you do for a living? What do you do day to day? What do your activities look like? Because when you basically try to pick a product for them or recommend a product, you just want to know their lifestyle. Because we want the compression stockings to fit with their lifestyle and they can be an individual, they can pick style and color, um, but we want them to wear the stockings. So to interrupt, so someone, if you're wearing shoes like you are, you wouldn't want one of the padded soles. Exactly. A padded foot because it won't fit in the shoe. But if you're wearing sneakers or boots or larger shoes, you exactly. could wear, like I, I like the ones with the padding on the bottom. It just yeah. it feels better. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing is preference. It's personal preference. Okay. For the type of shoes you have and you wear the most of, we want to fit that. What goes better with a shoe than a sock? So we want to fit that sock to make sure it's comfortable and, and it's doing style, what it's And your style, if you like the bright colors or if you want blue, brown, black. Yes. And sheer. Um, the, the next question, and we're running out of time, there's a lot of hose out there, or socks out there. Mm -hmm. And just on both ends of the spectrum, you're on this end of the spectrum, you're a medical grade, even for the, the average person coming in, it's a medical socking, it's made to, to certain standards. What's the difference between that and some of the very inexpensive stockings? Things don't have to be expensive to be good, but sometimes if it's too good a deal, 
it's very expensive. Yeah, and, and we get that all the time. I would say for us, we're a class two medical device, so we have to uphold certain standards, and our products and garments have to do what they're actually gonna say they're gonna do. So for us, we get a lot of positive feedback from physicians and doctors because they recommend this as being the garment it's gonna say it's gonna do type thing. Okay. Um, with, the, with the cheaper products that are on the market, if it does the job, it does the job for you. But the nice part is, is if you go to Johnson's Compounding and Wellness, you're going to get that customer service aspect. You're going to get that medical measurement and, and that really education. Should, it is important not just to go by shoe size, to be fitted because you're looking for something to, to accomplish a goal. Yes. And just wearing a sock that's a little tighter than your regular sock isn't really doing much. Yeah, and you don't know maybe if it's, you know, a tourniquet effect on the top and it's too tight. And that could just keep it's the uncomfortable. fluid down below. Yeah, so I always say, you know, to talk to someone that's trained and knows what they're talking about and it's going to say what it's going to do and they can have that customer service and education piece, I think that's super important for a compression stocking. Okay, great. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to give us a call over at Johnson's. We do have um, surgical fitters that have been trained by Sigvaris mm -hmm. and they'll make sure you're getting the right product because the last thing you want to do is get the wrong product and not help the problem you have you're having i want to thank you so much for joining us today this thank has been you. great yes. and you did a training in the store and i learned a few new things today so thank you thank you for your time i appreciate it okay. and it's a great time thank you for coming thank you